ensures that the correct tightening torque is reached. If the control unit needs to be removed, the remaining portion of the nut can be threaded off using this special tool, socket number 9259. The control unit comes together with the system's main wiring harness. Now the wiring harness cannot be removed from the control unit. If a problem occurs in either component, both of them must be replaced together. Two deceleration sensors are used. They are located in the left and right side of the plenum. The sensors are connected to the airbag control unit and will react to forward deceleration, such as those experienced in a severe frontal collision. Each sensor consists of a roller with a spring band mounted around it. Now, when forward deceleration forces exceed about 8 to 11 Gs, this roller will move forward and close an electrical contact. Now, only one of these sensors, together with the safety sensor, needs to close to activate the airbag. The sensors are fastened in place with the same shear nuts used to install the control unit. The sensors must be installed with the arrow pointing in the forward direction. The last component of the system that we should look at is this spiral spring assembly. This is what makes the electrical connection to the airbag. It is mounted on top of the steering column, attached directly to the stock switches, and it makes the electrical connection from the control unit to the gas generator. It contains two spiral springs that wind and unwind as the steering wheel is turned. Now this spiral spring assembly can turn about four turns from the center position in either direction. Now because of this, we must make sure that the front wheels are in the straight ahead position if we ever have to remove this spiral spring assembly. We also need to take a look at the indicator lights. The airbag system has two indicator lights located in the instrument cluster. The airbag control light will come on when the car is first started. The light will stay on for about five to eight seconds and should go out after the control unit has performed an electronic check of the system. If either indicator light stays on, there is a problem in the system and it must be tested with the VAG 1551. If either of the indicator lights stay on, the system must be tested using the VAG 1551 diagnostic tester. Now this is the only tester that can be used on the airbag system. The tester is used to read the system's fault memory, erase the fault memory, and turn out the warning light. Two connectors are located under the shift boot. This is where we connect the VAG 1551 tester to the airbag system. Before connecting the tester, make sure the car has been started and the engine has been run so that all possible faults are stored in the permanent memory. Then shut the ignition off and connect the tester. Connect the black connector from the tester to the black connector in the center console. Then connect the white connector from the tester to the red connector in the center console. We won't need to use the blue connector from the tester. With the ignition turned back on, we can now push button 1 to select the rapid data transfer mode. The VAG 1551 will only test the Cabriolet airbag system when it is in the rapid data mode. Now with rapid data selected, we can now enter a number for an address word. If you don't remember what the correct number is, by pressing the help button, the VAG 1551 will print out the list of complete address words. For the Cabriolet airbag, the correct number for this address is 57. So we'll push 5, 7, and we can enter it with the Q button. 